There we go. That is, you know, not a picturesque type of game. It's not a game that you're going to go, that is a beautiful game by the Toronto Raptors. We're not going to say that. But that was for sure a grind it out type of game. And they come out on top 96-94 over the Miami Heat. And with that win, as we've been saying over the past few days, win number 49 for the Toronto Raptors. They are one win away from 50. I mean, if you have 49, one away from, Yeah, correct. Okay, my math is fantastic. And uh, that would be the first time in Raptors history they go back-to-back -back with a 50-plus wins. It's a very good year. Very good year if they can find a way to do 50. But nonetheless... They had a very good second half of the year, even without Kyle Lowry for most of it. So, um, but let's break this one down a little bit, all right? Raptors don't play offensively great. Obviously, when the, when the score is 96-94, neither, neither team shot the ball really well. Raptors shoot 41%. Miami shoots 40%. Raptors do shoot 45% from three, which is nice. But again, you know, 71% from the line, 17 of 24, yeah, not too great. Especially down the stretch, they were missing a couple, so that was, yeah. But then again, the Raptors only get 14 assists, you know. I mean, it's okay, but we're used to seeing 20-plus, you know, as of late, and that's what we like to see. But, I mean, you're like I said, it's a grinded-out type of game. Shots weren't really falling. You still find a way to get 14 assists. They get 16 assists. Um, you, do, you do get 10 steals, but I, what I don't like from the Raptors is the 15 turnovers. That is a number I, I don't like. Thank goodness Miami had 19 turnovers, and the Raptors did make them pay for a lot of those. But when you're giving up 15 turnovers, especially against a good team like Cleveland, Washington, Boston, those turnovers might they might come back and bite you real bad. But, uh, you know, again, Miami didn't play too well. They did a really good job, the Raptors did, containing Hassan Whiteside. He did have a double-double in this one, 12 points, 10 boards. But overall, the guy shot under 30% from the field. Right, he shot 28% from the field. Nothing special, and that is a guy you have to be, you know, careful of because he can he could take over a game, but he wasn't able to in this one. They did a, the Raptors did a great job. Uh, you know, JV had nine points, ten boards. Again, he didn't, you know, he didn't go crazy. But he only took nine shots. He was four of nine shooting. Okay, again, Lowry second game back as a Raptor. Well, <laughs> second game back after the injury, and. Uh, offensively, you know, points-wise, if you're looking at it, he didn't have a great night. You know, he didn't shoot the ball well, 5 of 14. But, you know, overall, when you're when you're having seven boards and six assists, I mean, again, it's like we've been talking about DeMar all season long. It's the all-around type of game that helps you win games, and that's what, we'll, that's what Lowry was tonight, scrapping for rebounds, jumping in there for loose balls. That's what we know Kyle Lowry is, and that's what we have missed. However... DeMar DeRozan had 38 in this one. Six boards to go along with that and a couple assists. He had a darn good night himself. He shot the ball, um, you know, or, or, well, not too, actually not too great. It was good for a while until Josh Mc, or Josh McRoberts. Why, what, what? No, Josh Richardson started guarding him. I mean, he, he did a really good job on DeMar. Again, he contained him, but you didn't shut him down. That's what elite players do. When they get a good defender on them, they find a way to do their job, but the other players contain. And that's what uh, uh, Josh Richardson did in that, you know, second half. I mean, first half, DeMar, I think he had like, what, 25, 27 in that first half. You know, didn't have as much in the third and fourth quarter, but over, overall, pretty good game. I thought, you know, again, there were times where they were moving the ball well, but overall, it was like the ball wasn't moving enough. But it's okay. You know, I'm going to say that Lowry and, you know, and and all these guys are still trying to get adjusted. It's only their second game. And I'm glad Lowry came back when he did because it seems like he's fine, which is, which is great news. And you get four games to kind of get him into the swing of things. And I thought the team in the first, you know, in the last game, uh, I thought, you know, Lowry did a great job. Or excuse me. You know, I don't know if I said in, in, this, in this video so far that they this their first you know they, they came out came off after a loss. This is their first win after a loss. I totally blanked out. They've won two in a row now. You know, um, and both of them been with Lowry, and he's been a big difference maker in both games. You know, on the scoreboard, not tonight, but again, it's the type of player Kyle Lowry is, and we loved it.
Now, you know, credits to uh, former Raptor James Johnson. He's putting up one heck of a season. I mean, you know, the guy's averaging. What's what's he averaging this year? 12, 12, 12.6 bo- uh, points, uh, 4.8 boards. And he had 22 and 10 tonight. He was big. He was huge. I mean, I like James when he was here. I like I like I like JJ when he was here. He was a great player, a strong guy, and a pretty good defender. But he can't keep everybody alike, right? That's just, that's sports. Did we love Edwin Encarnacion? Of course we did, but he's gone, right? So it's tough. It's tough when they come back and bite you as well. And I was really scared he was going to bite us in this one. But they were able to hang on and match bucket for bucket down the stretch. Hit a couple free throws. They knocked down a three. You're like, oh, my God. You know, and then they foul, and you get a couple more free throws. Oh, thank God. They knocked down another three. Oh, my God. And it was just like, it was back and forth craziness. But they got the win nonetheless. They can get as close as they want. As long as we have the win, doesn't matter what happens. Now, with the Raptors having two games remaining, it doesn't look like they're going to catch uh, Boston. They have to do a Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, you know, they're in the same situation. Boston is in the situation the Leafs are in right now. Yeah. To a certain extent, obviously not second and third battling for it. You know, it's really just getting into playoff spot for the Leafs. But Boston has two game lead over the Raptors, right? That's what we know for sure. Or excuse me, it's a game and a half. So you, it's a toss up. But again, it's, it's more or less like the Raptors have to lose or win both games and they have to lose both games. That's really what it is. Or they, I'm assuming they have three games left. You know, yes, they do have three games left. So again, if they lose one of them and then we're game behind, eh, you never know. But I, again, that's not what our priority is. Our priority is to finish this season strong and uh, stay in third place. Because I don't want Washington jumping us. I don't want it at all. I think you guys would agree with me about that for a few reasons. You don't want to play Cleveland in that second round if you get there, obviously. And, you know, you'd rather be third than fourth place. I mean, overall, that's what you want, right? You don't want to even, you know, get close. Uh, think about it. This is actually a funny thing. I just, I'm just looking at it here. If the Raptors find a way to jump Boston and the standings stay the same today, we play Chicago. So how about we don't? past Boston. All right, that sounds all right for me right now. But um no again, like I like I said, you know, we we want to stay ahead of Washington just because of again, home court if you end up facing the Wizards eventually and also you don't want to play Cleveland in that second round. That's just what we don't want to see. I mean, Boston's a good team nonetheless. They're a great great team, but you'd rather face Boston than Cleveland. Just what I'm saying. So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video and you enjoyed this game, because uh, it was a nail-biter, but it was a decent one overall, hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Uh, I appreciate all the feedback you guys gave me on the um, 500 subscriber video. Let's keep the ball rolling. Let's keep them coming. We love it. Oh, I'm loving it. All right. Uh, comment down below, like I said, what you guys thought of this game. And uh, Twitter's going to be down in the description. Go follow up, and uh, we'll be tweeting after these games. While the games are going on, I'll be trying to get into that more. I ap- I apologize for not being into it, but yeah, it's so difficult when you're so focused on the game. Um, and we'll talk to you guys a little later, Blue Jays edition, as they're down in Tampa taking on the Rays, hoping for better news for the Jays as they're not having a great night, you know, pitching-wise. But let's see if they can come back. And also, Leafs edition, tomorrow night, We didn't get help from Montreal today. No help from Montreal whatsoever. You know, obviously, Montreal, this big game, they lose 4-2 to Tampa, but Tampa Bay is one point behind the Leafs. But the Leafs win tomorrow. That's it. We clinch a playoff spot. Pittsburgh. They're at the Air Canada Center. It's a big game tomorrow night for the Leafs. And also, Raptors edition, like we have been saying, that they play the New York Knicks in New York. Obviously, that's the game you want to win your 50 wins. You want to get that 50 wins. That's a Sunday afternoon game. It's a noon tip-off. All right, so that's a a different one. We haven't seen much of that this year. Have we seen it all this year? I don't think so. All right, so we'll talk to you guys then. And hopefully, when we talk to you guys post-game, we'll have a 50-win club under our belt. We'll see you guys then.